Hello, Ryan here, AK Mac, and welcome. Today, I want to delve into the vast world of Star Citizen careers. This is to be a new series which should hopefully help you. Within the Star Citizen position universe, there are many choices when it comes to possible careers or jobs, and deciding on what you want to do, be it bounty hunting, mining, farming, trading, it can be very difficult. Please bear in mind that anything I do mention in this video may and will likely change as the game becomes more fleshed out. I will do follow-up videos for any updates which may crop up, so be sure to subscribe. First up is a career that I am very interested in and have thought over a lot, and it's cargo hauling. This involves the logistical distribution of various supplies throughout the verse, basically picking up cargo and taking it to another destination. Think you're a truck simulator, but far more in depth and in space, obviously. The basics will be obtaining a cargo hauling job, traveling to the destination in order to pick up the said cargo, and then taking it to its final destination and getting paid. Now the types of hauling jobs there will be will consist of maybe the same planet, so from one area of the same planet to the next, the same system, or multiple system deliveries. They could have been assigned by a third party requiring supplies for manufacturing, or for yourself carrying ores you or your org mates have mined. Examples like delivering supplies to an outpost on, say, Microtech, taking a load of scrap electronics to a weapons factory, or dropping medical supplies to a planet suffering from a natural disaster, Whatever the job is, it will consist of a few similarities. There will likely be many methods on how to obtain a job hauling cargo. The primary method would be through a terminal in the TDD, which is the Trade and Development Division, an establishment in which jobs of all types will be listed for people to choose. On the terminals, I expect we'll see a short blurb explaining the job which is required, the cargo type you'll be hauling, things like weapons, livestock, liquids, materials, or the list does go on. The amount of cargo in standard cargo units or SCU, the pickup and the drop off locations, the time in which it needs to be delivered by and of course the fiscal reward, plus anything else that may be deemed useful. When it comes to deciding which hauling job is suitable for you there are numerous factors to consider. These are things like what ship, so the cargo hold size, the components, the loadout, the size of crew, your crew members, navigation which are locations both from and to, the possibility of hiring escorts, not the sexy kind, unfortunately. The possible areas of space needed to pass through, and ultimately the financial pay, and whether it's worth it. Which is really the starting point for most jobs, is what it will pay. The potential return will have the most influence on all of your decisions when picking the right ship, the right crew, the right components, everything. Next up is picking the right ship. Now, the biggest decider for this will likely be the size of your cargo hold. You'll need to consider the best ship for the job. Picking a large ship like the Hull Sea, for example, which has a capacity of roughly 4,500 standard cargo units, for a job delivering 200 SCU would not be very beneficial. And on the other hand, picking an Avenger Titan for a job transporting 3,000 SCU would be, well, impossible. It also depends on whereabouts in or out of the Empire you will be travelling. Having a ship which can defend itself well will prove very useful if you are varying from the trade lanes. Heading through unsecure or unpoliced routes can be very dangerous. The components and weapons for your chosen ship will need to be decided too. For example, having an industrial power plant or set of industrial thrusters would be very helpful if you have a large amount of heavy cargo to shift. So when it comes to deciding on a crew, the first decision will be the amount of crew. For the sake of, let's say, 200 standard cargo units, paying a crew of 8 would not be very rewarding for yourself. We don't know the scale of pay we're likely to receive for an average cargo run, but let's say for 200 standard cargo units you'll earn three to 4,000 UEC. Now splitting that between eight crew members, as well as factoring in your expenses like fuel, ammunition, any repairs you may require, would end up in a loss or a very small return. Also, selecting the crew you want to work with, be it real life players or AI is important. Choosing a boarding specialist when you're just hauling cargo would be silly. So you'll need to choose carefully considering their strengths and weaknesses. With AI, the cost of crew members will vary dependent on their skill set. When picking the job, pay attention to the locations both from and to, which will help you be more efficient with your resources. It's pointless taking a job which requires you to travel long distances just to pick up the cargo when you could find a local one. Also, consider if you are planning a trip to a particular system or location and you have some space in the back of your ship, you may as well carry some cargo and get paid for it, even if it's just paying for your fuel to get to that location. Now, hiring escorts is going to be a very difficult decision at times. The idea of having an armed personnel escort sounds very appealing, 
especially if your cargo is valuable or if you have a large haul. However, the flip side is the cost can outweigh the pay. Deciding whether it's worth hiring escorts, be it onboard personnel or wingmen in fighters, will be tough, most likely requiring a lot of planning. So do think carefully. It's all well and good going it alone and getting a large paycheck, but it's not so good if you run into trouble and then don't make it home at all. If you do choose to hire, be sure to pick those who have a clean, honest track record. Otherwise, they could be the ones that are causing the trouble. Don't worry, though. There will be a rating system in place like Uber when it comes to hiring real players. Before taking off, perhaps when your cargo is being loaded into your ship, taking the time to plot an appropriate course from A to B is imperative. Getting it wrong could be very costly or even deadly. There are many areas of the verse which are home to those looking for an easy score and venturing away from the trade lanes can be extremely difficult. Expect along busy routes plenty of security or system police. Sticking to these trade lanes will be a safer choice, meaning you will less likely to be attacked. However, the pay won't be as high if you were to venture off. I do expect many of the safer routes will be you making use of the large jump points. Talking of which, jump points will remove a large chunk of the decision making when it comes to plotting your course. They consist of small, medium or large, and this refers to the size of your ship which can fit through them. Although they are undefined as yet which ships will fit what, a small jump point will allow ships for let's say up to the Vanguard, medium maybe the Starfarer is the, is the biggest ship for them, and then large is anything bigger. Again, just my opinion. So when it comes to cargo ships and their sizes, I'm going to break them down into small, medium and large, depending on, you know, the, the jump points they can fit through. The Mustang Alpha, the Aurora Clipper, the Cutlass Black and the Avenger Titan and the Reliant are all quite small, nifty haulers, ranging from around four standard cargo units to potentially about 33. The Hull A and the Hull B are also quite small ships. The Hull A has a cargo hold of about 48 standard cargo units and the Hull B is roughly 384, so quite a big difference there. Please bear in mind that all these cargo units are work in progress. Some of them are very old, some of them are, are updated recently, but we cannot take them all as gospel. So medium ships, you're looking around the Constellation Andromeda, Taurus sizes, the Freelancer and the Freelancer Max, the Starfarer, the Retaliator with its cargo battlefield upgrade kit, and the Hull C. The larger ships will be your Caterpillar, the Banu Merchantman, and then your Hull D and Hull E. Now the Hull series is perhaps the most practical when it comes to hauling cargo. The Hull A can carry about 48 standard cargo units, the B can carry 384, the Hull C has a capacity of 4608, the D has 20,736, and the E being the biggest can carry around 98,304. Again, all work in progress. When it comes to managing and interacting your cargo, for the first drop of the cargo mechanic, I believe if you're hauling a small amount of cargo, your AI or yourself will need to manually take the cargo in and out of your cargo hold. For larger ships, it will be automated system which will pop the cargo into your hold without physically interacting with any crates. It is yet to be determined as to what size ship will require what method. My guess is probably anything bigger than a freelancer may use the auto system as obviously having to carry more than 30 crates in and out of your ship can get very tedious. Now when it comes to interacting with cargo crates, these will vary depending on the size of the object, which the objects are broken into two. You've got tanks and you have crates. Crates hold solid items and tanks hold liquids or gaseous items. There are many ways available to move your cargo, be it grabby hands, which is physically picking it up, anti-grav pulses, pallets, cargo jacks, cargo drones or loader suits like you see in Aliens. But once the cargo is on board your ship, you will have access to the cargo manifest through either your Moby Glass or the ship panel. This will explain everything you need to know regarding your hull, including the integrity of the crates, the capacity, the contents within the crates and its mass. I think it's safe to say that when it comes to the careers and Star Citizen, they will not be as simple as some may expect. Taking a preloaded vehicle from A to B is not all that's gonna be required. Cargo hauling will need to be properly planned and organised should you want it to go well and be worthwhile. Everything from choosing your ship and its loadout to ensuring that you have the right crew for the job will need to be determined. Personally, I absolutely love the idea of cargo hauling, all the fine detail which will have to be considered, and even the smallest of cargo runs will need to be thoroughly thought out before setting off. It is something I will likely do in the verse a lot. I will be sticking to my Caterpillar, 
And the good thing is that when cargo hauling, it can take a matter of minutes up to hours, perhaps if you're going from system to system. Anyway, this was the first episode of the Star Citizen Career series. Let me know what you want to see next. What are you most excited for? Are you hyped for cargo hauling? This will come pretty soon, I think. I think 3.0 is the first drop we'll have for cargo hauling. Let me know your thoughts, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on Twitch. Follow me on Twitter. And I shall see you next time.